Welcome to Forbes Newsroom. Joining me now is Senator Tammy Duckworth. Senator, thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to be on. Thanks for having me. Of course. You introduced legislation earlier this month that calls on the Federal Aviation Administration to be more transparent about its emergency evacuation standards. Can you explain why you saw the need for your bill? Yes. Well, I saw, uh, the FAA conducted an evacuation test to see if they could evacuate an aircraft to the standard that they have, which is 90 seconds. Um, and then when I looked at how they conducted the test, they only had 60 passengers on the aircraft and nobody had carry on luggage and all the passengers were adults and under the age of 60. And I don't know when the last time you were on an airplane and only had 60 people on it and nobody brought carry on luggage. But I thought that's not a realistic test and um, it could endanger the flying public if uh, uh, we're training to a standard that's not realistic. And is this 90 second benchmark feasible at all? Well, that's the thing. I don't know. Uh, the FAA thought it was feasible back when it put it into place as part of FAA regulation, but that was a number of years ago, maybe even more than a decade ago. I don't, um, but it's been around for a very long time. Um, and they're still testing aircraft configurations to that old standard. Um, and my, my response is great. I mean, if that's your regulation and that's the standard, then let's test to that, but let's conduct a realistic test um, and, and, and you know, recreate real world conditions, not this artificial situation where you only put 60 people on an airplane. Of course, and I want you to explain your legislation. How would your bill fix this? So my bill would require the FAA when they conduct these tests to include certain things. They have to include passengers of different ages. Uh, they have to include passengers with disabilities. They Passengers have to be different heights and weights. Um, they have to include carry-on baggage. So they have to simulate that people were actually bring carry-on luggage onto an airplane. Um, uh, they have to include uh, passengers or simulate passengers who can't speak English or who are nonverbal. Um, and then they have to take into account the seat size and the pitch of seats in modern aircraft. And the whole goal being that if we're going to train flight attendants and cabin crews to evacuate to a 90 second standards, then we need to make sure that that's actually something that's achievable. Um, and, and if it's not achievable, then we need to know that because you know the firefighters on the ground need to know how quickly they have to get to an airplane and how long it's gonna take to evacuate that airplane. And right now we have no real, no real world um, uh, benchmark by which to measure that. I do want to take a step back here. What has changed since the 1960s when the FAA first began requiring planes to be evacuated in 90 seconds or less? Well, let's see. Um, the seats have gotten smaller. There are more seats. They're more closely packed inside an aircraft. Um, the pitch is much straighter, so it's it's harder to get in and out. I, I don't know when the last time you got in and out of an airplane. I fly you know, at least once a week. Um, and, and you can see how tightly uh, passengers are packed into aircraft. People are carrying more on board. Ever since airlines started charging for you to check in luggage, more people carry more bags on board the aircraft. So there's more stuff getting in the way. Parents like myself who have young children are now using car seats in airplanes. Um, and so our children are going to strap into car seats on airplanes for their safety if there is um, some sort of a forced landing, but that means you've got to deal with car seats when you're trying to evacuate the aircraft and, and unstrapped children. Um, none of that was standard practice in the 1960s. Who do you think is to blame here for these evacuation standards missing the mark? I just think it's not been updated. And I think that the FAA is training to an old standard and not taking into account um, modern aircraft configurations. And so, um, uh, I felt that it was important to make sure that they do uh, take into account all of the variables that, that exist in modern day travel. You know, too often in the aviation industry, I'm, I'm a pilot, I, I flew for the army and I fly in uh, civilian as a general aviation pilot as well. Um, we, the saying is that FAA regulations are written in blood um, and that is the FAA changes its rules after there's a terrible accident um, and somebody gets injured or dies. And I don't want that to happen before we change the standards for this. I'd rather fix the problem now so that we can properly train our air, our cabin crews and our firefighting and our rescue personnel so that we don't have to write this regulation in blood. Why do you think the FAA is so hesitant to change their standards in general? 
Well, it's a bureaucratic process. Um, and, and, you know, I, you're going to have to ask the FAA, but um, uh, too often it's a reactive agency as, a, as, a, in, as opposed to being a proactive agency. And I just want to make sure that uh, in this case, we don't put passengers in harm's way by certifying an aircraft or certifying an evacuation time, so like 90 seconds. Um, that is not realistic.